So you're going to Stanford, the legendary school which, every generation, assembles the world's most driven and accomplished students to worship a fucking tree. With its vast resources and unique culture, Stanford can be quite tricky to navigate, especially as an undergrad. When I was a freshman, I got a lot of anxiety from having no idea what I was doing. So now, as a senior, I'm here to help you get an overview of the Stanford experience, as well as leave some advice on how you can make the most out of your time here. First, the people. Hands down, the best part of the school. At Stanford, you'll meet others with all sorts of amazing talents and worldviews, and working with them will help you grow significantly as a person. But of course, this can also feel a little daunting. At other colleges, you might feel bad because your roommate is taller than you. But at Stanford, it's because she has five gold medals from the Olympics, and you have, like, zero. And on top of that, she's still taller than you. So you might start off feeling a little anxious, and that's alright. I didn't come here with the best confidence either, since I was flying in from the middle of East Jesus Nowhere and had cured a total of, hmm, let's see, zero cancers. But over time, I found that this mindset is extremely common. Yes, some people will start the year here thinking, oh damn, my girthy SAT score is about to get me all of the babes. But it turns out, the overwhelming majority are just regular, humble people, who are really good at what they do, but have normal human insecurities. More often than not, people here genuinely want to learn about you and your interests, that is, if you're willing to put in the same effort for them. Even now, my best friends today are people who, three years ago, I said something like this to. Hey, I love to hear more about what you're doing with thing. I also, relatable thing. Let's talk more at lunch tomorrow? While it may seem simple, the specific language I used is actually quite nuanced. As you'll learn over time, you should avoid sayings such as, let's grab lunch sometime, which is actually a code phrase here at Stanford for, I like you, but like, go away. Also, if you show up to a hangout on time and you're the only one there, know that this happens a lot at Stanford, and it usually occurs because of the time zone difference. On a bigger scale, finding the right community for you can also seem scary. Fortunately, Stanford has a club for pretty much anything. We have your standard orgs, but also stuff like Jump Rope Team, Dragon Boaters, Bondage Club, and Extra Kinky Bondage Club. I'd highly recommend setting aside time to explore the activities fair. Just remember, it's the small and dedicated groups that give the most lasting connections and meaningful experiences. In my first month, I joined Stanford Speakers Bureau, and I had an awesome time putting on huge campus events with a close policy of like 15 people. Although having countless opportunities is usually good, it can also lead to a sense of FOMO, which can drive many of us to take on more than we can handle. This brings us to our second topic, mental health. Between classes, clubs, job hunting, and social life, life can get overwhelming here. And you might start feeling like college is sink or swim, and that's pretty natural. Sadly though, many people here react to these situations by developing what's called Stanford Duck Syndrome, so-called because they feel pressured to look calm on the surface despite having to work really hard underneath. And so everyone looks at each other and thinks, Oh shit, I'm the only one struggling, and nobody has any fun. Don't do this. One of the worst things you can do to your mental health here is to develop a habit of comparing your backstage feelings with other people's highlight reels. Everybody struggles sometimes, whether they show it or not. If you need help, talk to your dorm's fee or give the Bridge Peer Counseling Center an anonymous call. Sadly, Stanford's official mental health support system is pretty weak, and indeed, a lot of students think that it's blatantly under-resourced. But on the bright side, if you look at the tier list, we're not actually that bad. Another good thing to do for mental health is to set a healthy routine to de-stress yourself when things get tough. There's no right or wrong way to do this, just figure out whatever works for you. Personally, I like to get some fresh air, wander around the main quad, and get reminded of all the Asian tourists who still believe in me. Finally, even if you do feel like you're sinking, chances are that's all it is, a feeling. Having discipline is great and all, 
but remember it's okay to take an L once in a while. Just keep in mind that you're at Stanford, where we have great inflation, excellent funding, and the faculty here actually care about you, unlike at certain unranked public schools. In practice, it's pretty hard to actually sink very far. Unless, ironically, you pretend to sail. Our last major topic is, of course, classes. I find that in general, freshmen have a lot of variance in what they expect here. Some come in thinking college will be super easy, so they add every possible commitment under the sun until their card of schedule makes me think of that, like, one old video. The history of the Soviet Union to the tune of Tetris. This is because their calendar has more conflicting classes than a Marxist revolution, and as a result, it starts looking like a really fucked up Tetris game. Don't do this. On the other extreme, some people come in thinking of Stanford as this bootcamp where you get intellectually suplexed by all your professors on a daily basis, and you have to plan out all of your weekly cries around your 37 problem sets. Such a university does exist, but it's not us. To get comfortable with your schedule, I advise taking full advantage of our shopping season, where you can try out and drop any number of classes without affecting your transcript. This lets you have a good idea of your workload as well as avoid all the dubious profs. For example, last year I was sitting in day one of a stats class when the instructor announced, yeah so the reason why there's no grade breakdown on the syllabus is that your final grade is determined by me. Subjectively. And so the girl in front of me just pulled out access, dropped the class, and left. Not all heroes wear capes. But in general, the profs here are actually very friendly and very competent. Though many mainly focus on their research, most do have a genuine interest in helping you find your way too. Be sure to make use of office hours and faculty night. You'll get much better advice than from me, or maybe even a letter of rec down the road. Lastly, here are some other stuff you should be prepared for. Every March, campus gets infested with caterpillars, and they often dangle in your way when you're walking to Ariaga. Like, any of them. Administration clears out the bugs somehow right before admit weekend, so there is a brief period of safety. But when summer hits, a different and much worse plague begins. Fucking high schoolers. Disgusting. Also, make sure to not worry too much over internships for your first summer. If you get one, that's great. If you don't get one, that's standard and don't worry about it. I was definitely stressed about my lack of offers at first, but eventually, I just began to appreciate how companies were even willing to barter clothing for my completely useless piece of paper. So there you have it. I hope this video helped, but keep in mind that I'm just one undergrad out of many. If you want more credible sources, ask your RAs and RFs. So far, every RA I've known here has been incredibly awesome, and they're all super happy to help out. Finally, don't buy tap boba, frat parties don't have food, your email gets you free stuff, and please close the door to secure the building. Enjoy your time here. Don't be a stranger.